In this video, I wanted to talk just briefly about uh, a couple of the uses for series. And since we're really going to be looking at sequences and series for the next uh, month or so in Calc 2, I think it's important to start with just, you know, what, what can they do for us and how have they historically been used. So these are just two very quick examples. Now I hope, just looking at this right away, 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh, you could immediately think about uh, continuing this pattern. And you'd say, well, the next term would be adding a ninth and then subtracting an eleventh and then adding a thirteenth and so on. You know, just going up by odd numbers and alternating uh, whether that term is positive or negative. Now, if you did this uh, and actually type this in your in your calculator, uh, you'd have you know one minus a third is two thirds, so point six, um, you know point six six seven. Then you'd add a fifth, so you'd be at point eight eight seven, and then you'd subtract a seventh, you'd be at point seven two something like that. And what would begin to happen in this alternating series is, you know, you start at 1, and I'm going to do just, you know, think about this like a, a little sketch. You start at 1, and then your next term is 2 thirds, and your next term is up a little bit, and you essentially just bounce back and forth but the bounce is going to get smaller every time. And I point this out because there actually has to be then some kind of limit in the middle that this bouncing alternating sequence, or series, excuse me, approaches. There has to be a limit. And if you continued this, you would figure out, and it takes a while, it takes, you know, uh, quite a few terms, uh, you would get closer and closer to 0.78. It'll just keep bouncing around that. Well, the limit of this is actually pi over 4. Now, this is a historically significant series because it was one of the first ways that calculus was used to really estimate the value of pi. And it allowed us, instead of having to just do geometric shapes and fit it into circles and estimate pi, it allowed us a pretty quick way to estimate many digits of pi. Now I say quickly, of course, you still had to add a bunch of these terms together and, and you know, back when it was being done there was no calculator, but it still was better than doing the, the geometry and figuring out all the uh, different shapes and putting bounds on, on this uh, value for pi. So this was a good way. The fact that it's an alternating series is really important as well because, of course, the bounce gets smaller and smaller. It's not suddenly going to go back up. So once we have a pretty small uh, idea of, you know, it's, it's not bouncing back and forth, we also can get a pretty good idea of how, how much error there might be, how close we are to the real value of pi over 4. Now as time goes on, we're going to look at how this sequence was discovered and, and where it came from, but I just think it's important to see that this, uh, this series of just, you know, these terms gives us a great estimate of pi over 4, much better than geometry did. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about was some integrating, and mainly what we're going to use uh, a series for uh, in Calc 2. If I wanted to integrate, if I want to find the area under e to the x squared from 0 to 1, uh, I think, first of all, I would just start going through my ideas. It's not a standard integral. Substitution's not going to work because if u was x squared, du would be 2x. Integration by parts is not going to work. Um, you know, if I made this u, I'd, I guess, have du, but it, it would just keep getting more and more complicated. Uh, it's not a fraction, so partial fractions isn't going to work. It's not trigonometric substitution, and you begin to run out of things in your bag of tricks. Well, that's because you can't integrate this. But if I said to you that this function, e to the x squared, was almost the same as this polynomial, okay, almost the same, let me put this right up here, and you might say, well, how did you come up with that polynomial? Don't focus on that right now. That's what our goal is in this course, is figuring out how you come up with that polynomial. But when I say it's approximately the same, let me bring in this graph, you see e to the x squared is in red and the uh, polynomial is in blue. 
And from 0 to 1, especially, from 0 to 1, they look like they're right on top of each other. So if I want the area under the red from 0 to 1, and I can't do it, why not find the area under the blue from 0 to 1? Because that, despite the fact it's a long function, it's not a bad antiderivative. And you can see that as you go on and on, they begin to separate, but from 0 to 1, they look really, really similar. Okay, so let me zoom this out and bring this in. So instead of integrating e to the x squared, why don't I integrate the, the polynomial that's essentially the same? So x plus one-third x cubed plus one-tenth x to the tenth or fifth. Plus, and it's all just power rule. Evaluate at 1 and 0. And if I actually then plug in 1, I get 1.461. And I plug in 0, of course, I get 0. So my area under the, the uh, polynomial is 1.461. If you went back and actually did fn int to figure out what this is, you get 1.462. So creating this polynomial that's almost the same, got us within one one-thousandth of the true area. Now again, you don't know how to do that yet. You don't know how to actually, you know, where this came from. But I think you could see a pattern. You can say, well, x squared, x to the fourth. Probably the next term would be x to the tenth and then x to the twelfth. And we want to use these patterns and these ideas to build series. And this is a series because it's a sum. And of course, the way to get a better and better estimate is to add more terms. You know, I was within a thousandth, but I could have done even better by going another term. And that's why they're called infinite series, because if you could continue building terms on and on forever, the polynomial would exactly match the function we couldn't work with. So again, uh, another use of series is estimating functions we can't work with with functions that we can work with.